The genetic origins of the Goths, a significant East Germanic people, have long intrigued historians and archaeologists. DNA evidence now conclusively links the early Goths to southern Scandinavia, bringing clarity to their migrations and cultural transformations. Findings from the Wheelbark culture in Poland, often identified as the Goths' archaeological footprint, have played a pivotal role in this discovery. Genetic analyses have revealed a marked prevalence of Y-DNA haplogroup I1 among Wheelbark culture males, particularly subclades such as I1A1L22. These genetic markers are hallmarks of Nordic populations, further substantiating the claim that the Goths originated in Scandinavia. The heavy presence of haplogroup I1 in the Wheelbark community contrasts sharply with the genetic landscape of Poland's preceding Bronze Age cultures. Earlier peoples, like those from the Turskiniak or Lusatian cultures, primarily carried Y-DNA haplogroups R1A and I2. These markers are more typical of Baltic or Eastern European populations. The significant shift seen in the wheelbark samples, with an influx of Scandinavian haplogroups, signals a clear instance of large-scale immigration. Archaeological evidence further supports this, with burial practices such as inhumation, Scandinavian-style boat graves, and stone circles appearing in Poland during the same period. These customs align with those in Iron Age southern Scandinavia, linking the migrants to their northern roots. Interestingly, the I1 haplogroup among the wheelbark culture shows substantial diversity, suggesting that the migrating Goths hailed from various clans across Scandinavia. For instance, the I1 L22 subclade, with a northeastern distribution, might point to origins in regions like eastern Sweden. Meanwhile, the I1L1237 subclade, more commonly associated with southern Scandinavia, ties the migration to areas like Gotland. Such genetic variation provides a more nuanced understanding of the population movements behind the formation of the Wheelbark culture. Some earlier scholars suggested that the Goths emerged locally in Central Europe through gradual cultural evolution, rather than direct migration. However, genetic data from studies reveal that the wheelbark culture cannot be modelled as a simple continuation of local Bronze Age populations. Instead, as mentioned earlier, it formed through a significant influx of northern immigrants, who brought not just new genes, but also distinct burial customs, languages, and social structures. The Goths, particularly in their early stages around the 1st to 3rd centuries AD, likely had a striking appearance that reflected their northern origins. Most Gothic men and women had fair to light skin with features common in today's Scandinavia. Blue or grey eyes were widespread, often paired with blonde or light brown hair. Some may have had reddish tones, especially among the women, giving them a distinct and memorable look among the darker-haired populations of the Roman world. Gothic men were typically tall and broad-shouldered, with a muscular build suited to their warrior lifestyle. Their facial features were angular, with high cheekbones, prominent noses, and deep-set eyes that likely gave them a fierce presence. Women's role and status in Gothic society come to life vividly through their burials, particularly within the wheelbark culture of the early centuries AD. Female graves have consistently revealed a striking richness, underscoring the importance of women within Gothic social and ceremonial frameworks. Unlike their male counterparts, whose burials were often sparse and lacking weaponry, Gothic women were laid to rest adorned with intricate jewellery and elaborate costumes, symbolising not just wealth but possibly influence and prestige. A hallmark of Gothic female burials is the paired fibulae, often used to secure cloaks on both shoulders. These ornamental brooches, crafted from bronze, silver, or occasionally gold, were both functional and highly decorative, emphasising the attention given to female attire. Some burials contained additional fibulae located at the chest or waist, suggesting that Gothic women's clothing featured layered garments, held together with a variety of fasteners. Necklaces, bracelets, and belt buckles made from bronze were frequently uncovered as well, completing the impression of an opulent and carefully curated appearance even in death. These decorative elements provide a glimpse into the aesthetics and societal markers of the Goths, where jewellery served as a visual identifier of status and community belonging. What stands out even more from these graves is the lack of weapons. Unlike many contemporary cultures that buried male warriors with swords, shields, or spears, Gothic men in the wheelbark culture were rarely interred with such items. Instead, their graves were stark in comparison, featuring minimal artefacts, if any. This absence challenges traditional assumptions about martial valour being the central role of men in early Germanic societies. While the lack of weapons could make identifying male graves archaeologically more difficult, 
It also points to a society where grave goods for men were not necessarily tied to their societal contributions. It raises intriguing questions about the Gothic approach to gender roles, particularly the prominence of women's burials as a repository of visible wealth. The disparity between male and female burial practices highlights a unique aspect of Gothic communities. It suggests a cultural value placed on women as bearers of lineage, tradition, or perhaps even leadership roles in ceremonial or familial settings. Their ornate grave goods may have symbolised both their individual importance and their role within family or tribal networks. These insights enrich our understanding of Gothic society, demonstrating how burial rites served as a reflection of social hierarchies and the distinct ways men and women were commemorated. Through their burials, Gothic women emerged not as peripheral figures, but as integral participants in shaping their culture's identity. The Gothic adoption of cranial deformation, or artificial skull elongation, stands out as one of the most striking instances of cultural borrowing during the migration period. This practice, likely introduced through contact with the Huns, reflected a dynamic era of interaction, adaptation, and cultural exchange. Among the most fascinating examples of this phenomenon are individuals like the one discovered in Mediana, a Roman settlement in present-day Serbia. Identified as sample I-15549, this individual's artificially elongated skull signifies the Gothic assimilation of steppe nomadic traditions. Genetic testing further revealed that this individual carried Y-DNA haplogroup I-1, indicative of the Gothic Nordic lineage that persisted even as they moved and adapted culturally. The practice of cranial deformation involved binding the skull of an infant with tight bandages or wooden splints to extend its shape as the child grew. By the time of the migration period, this custom was deeply rooted among steppe nomads, including the Huns, who used it as a marker of identity, status, and perhaps even intimidation. It is believed that the Goths encountered this tradition during their migration into the Balkans, where they coexisted and often conflicted with the Huns. Through these interactions, cranial modification became a visible indicator of social alignment or political connections, allowing the Goths to integrate and assert influence while signalling their connection to powerful nomadic groups. The elongated skull of sample I-15549 offers important insights into the Gothic worldview at the time. This was not merely a case of aesthetic emulation, but likely reflected a strategic adoption of steppe traditions to cement alliances and cultural ties. The presence of artificially deformed skulls in Gothic archaeological contexts suggests that this practice became common among certain Gothic elites, who appeared eager to assert their belonging to or alliance with the dominant steppe cultures of the time. The retention of Gothic genetic markers, even in individuals displaying borrowed cultural traits, underscores that this syncretism did not dilute their ethnic identity. Instead, it highlights their flexibility in adopting new practices while maintaining core aspects of their heritage. The discovery of a rich Gothic burial in Kharkiv, Ukraine, offers a fascinating glimpse into the symbolic status displayed through burial artefacts during the migration period. This burial, dated to the 3rd century AD, is a testament to the intricate relationships between the Goths and the Roman Empire. Among the grave goods unearthed were Roman-made items such as finely crafted glass beakers, a decorated cauldron adorned with swaby knot motifs, and a luxury horn comb. These items were far more than functional. They were meticulously chosen symbols of prestige that reflected political alliances and social hierarchy. One of the most striking items found in the Kharkiv burial is the cauldron featuring motifs of bearded Germanic figures styled in the Swaby knot, a hairstyle emblematic of tribal Germanic warrior identity. This design famously mentioned by Tacitus as a mark of authority and stature, not only emphasized the Gothic affiliation with their warrior traditions, but also revealed the influence of Roman craftsmanship in these prestigious objects. The cauldrons, likely produced in Roman workshops, were part of imperial gifts bestowed upon Germanic tribal leaders. Such grand gestures were aimed at securing loyalty and fostering alliances with the Goths, who represented both powerful allies and formidable forces at the empire's borders. The inclusion of luxury items like glass beakers further underscores the burial's symbolic significance. Glassware, often imported from Roman territories, was extremely valuable and rare in Gothic contexts, marking the individual as a person of considerable importance. Similarly, the presence of an ornate horn comb, crafted with intricate bronze accents, points to personal grooming being associated with elite identity and presentation. These seemingly simple items carried deeper meanings. 
These artefacts also demonstrate how the Goths manoeuvred politically and culturally during a time of broader upheaval. By aligning themselves with the Roman Empire through the acceptance of such gifts, Goth leaders not only enhanced their own status, but also reinforced ties that could provide strategic advantages. These relationships, however, were not one-sided. The Roman Empire relied on fostering goodwill with powerful Germanic tribes to maintain peace along its precarious frontiers. The burial in Kharkiv encapsulates this complex dynamic, where objects served as more than grave goods. This remarkable find not only enriches our understanding of Gothic identity, but also illuminates the intricate web of connections that defined Europe's early centuries, bridging tribal traditions with imperial sophistication. The Chernyakov culture, emerging prominently as the Goths settled in Ukraine, exemplifies an extraordinary synthesis of diverse cultural and genetic influences. Dominated by the Goths, this multi-ethnic sphere blended elements from the Sarmatians, Dacians and Slavs, crafting a unique societal framework, reflective of extensive interaction and integration. While the available DNA data from this phase remains limited, archaeological and historical findings provide compelling evidence for the intertwined lives of these communities, where intermarriage and cultural exchange were commonplace. Artifacts excavated from Chernyakov sites reveal a striking mix of traditions. Sarmatian burial customs, Dacian pottery styles, and decorative motifs indicative of Slavic craftsmanship coexist with typically Gothic elements such as elaborate fibulae and distinct grave goods. This fusion suggests a social environment wherein different ethnic groups coalesced, creating a shared material culture while retaining traces of their heritage. Genetic evidence from the limited samples linked to the Chernyakov culture hints at a broader pattern of intermarriage and assimilation. Steppe-related haplogroups, such as R1AZ93, often associated with nomadic populations from the Pontic-Caspian region, began to appear in Gothic contexts during this phase. This indicates that steppe nomadic groups contributed to the genetic makeup of the Chernyakov population, further diversifying its demographic profile. The integration of Sarmatians, known for their equestrian prowess and distinct burial practices, might have occurred through alliances or cooperative endeavours, strengthening the Gothic presence in the region. Settlement patterns within Chernyakov sites add another layer to our understanding of this multicultural hub. Villages were expansive and included a variety of architectural features, from Roman-inspired elements like tiled roof constructions to semi-subterranean dwellings reminiscent of Dacian architecture. Such heterogeneous designs demonstrate the coexistence and collaboration of different cultural groups within shared communities. Additionally, agricultural tools and infrastructure, such as granaries and mills, reflect an advanced agrarian economy likely influenced by this pooled ingenuity. The Chernyakov culture is thus a testament to the Goths' ability to adapt and lead within a melting pot of identities. While maintaining their dominance, they exemplified the flexibility required to forge a new societal order, one enriched by the strengths and talents of their Sarmatian, Dacian and Slavic counterparts. This multicultural fusion in Ukraine echoes the fluidity of cultural and genetic boundaries during the migration period, offering invaluable insights into the dynamics of early medieval Europe. The Gothic-Roman conflict was not merely a series of battles, but a pivotal convergence of two distinct worlds, each adapting under the pressures of an evolving Europe. The frictions that emerged between the Goths and the Roman Empire charted a course for sweeping change, altering not only the political map of the late ancient world, but also reshaping the identities of both cultures in enduring ways. The Gothic Wars stand as one of the earliest signs of a growing unease on the empire's borders. By the 3rd century AD, Roman provinces near the Danube faced repeated incursions by Gothic tribes, whose warrior ethos paired with mobility made them formidable opponents. Unlike more transient marauders, the Goths often sought settlement rather than simple plunder. This ambition set them apart from many contemporaries, as they looked for land within Roman borders, to escape pressure from the Huns. Initially, this dynamic played out with the Romans conceding land in an attempt to preserve their peace along the Danube frontier. However, cracks in this semi-cooperative arrangement came into sharp relief following the famine of 376 AD. Starving Gothic migrants allowed to cross into Roman territories faced exploitation at the hands of corrupt Roman officials. Desperation turned to revolt, culminating in the Battle of Adrianople in 378 AD. Here, Gothic forces under their determined leaders crushed a Roman army and killed Emperor Valens. This battle was a seismic moment, 
one that highlighted the weakening grip of Rome as the dominant power and revealed the growing boldness of the Goths as key players in Europe's power dynamics. Following Adrianople, interactions between Goths and Romans toggled between tenuous alliances, such as serving as federate troops and outright hostility. The emergence of Alaric, a Gothic leader of immense strategic acumen, marked a turning point. Trained as a magister militum under Roman patronage, he later turned against Rome, leading his forces toward the empire's heartlands. Alaric's campaign culminated in the sack of Rome in 410 AD, a symbolic event that shattered the illusion of an unassailable eternal city. For the Goths, it signified their place as a rising power, carving out a vital role in the post-Roman order. This conflict embodied more than conquests. It represented an exchange fraught with cultural reinterpretation. The Goths, once peripheral raiders, became integrated into a fragmented Rome, leaving their mark on its military politics and ultimately its downfall. Ultimately, the Goths embodied the complexities of migration, conflict and cultural exchange. Their story reflects the fluidity of history and the enduring influence of those who adapt, lead and innovate amidst change.